Welcome in, everybody, to the Football Diary, telling you the stories of current and historic NFL. It's a weekday, which means that we are talking current NFL football. And the biggest thing on our minds right now is we wanted to look at some rookie quarterbacks. We wanted to look specifically at Trey Lance and Justin Fields. Right now, we're going to be doing kind of a career outlook, kind of if you were to invest in these players and looking at the situations they're in, the players that they are, the potential that they have, who's the guy that you're really leaning into? Now, if you want us to look more into deep dives and things like that, we can absolutely do that. We didn't want to make this a one hour long video and fully analyze every single little thing. But if you want more of this, we can absolutely do more. And if you want us to compare and contrast other players, other rookies, anything like that, let us know in the comment section down below. But let's get into this video. Now, Matt, I got to ask you, you're the San Francisco 49ers fan. Just so the people know, uh, you are a 49ers fan. If you're looking at these two players, Justin Fields and Trey Lance, you know, what, what are your kind of outlooks on them for the future? So I'll start this off by saying before the like the draft happened and in the draft process, I had Justin Fields as my quarterback three and I had Trey Lance as my quarterback two. Now, I also had these guys pretty close together. I think they're both really, really talented players. Um, I actually I actually kind of vow, and I trust me, I, I love Trey Lance, but I did vouch for Justin Fields to, or I kind of expected him to go to the 49ers. I, I thought either of them, I would, I would be very happy with them. So I like both the players a lot. Um, but when you look into the situations, I think it becomes a little bit clear who's in the better spot. Now we look at the, I'll start with the bears just cause I I'll say this. Cause I do think there's, I do think it, it they're both guys that you would want to invest in. I, I do think that, but when you look at the bears, you go, okay, this team has been very, very talented. And yes, they've had offensive line issues, but they have had some good offensive weapons and they never figured out with Mitch. And yes, Mitch probably should have been taken to overall, but a lot of that I'm going to kind of attribute to probably Matt Nagy. And I don't, I don't love Matt Nagy. don't think he's a terrible coach or anything like that, but I am concerned about putting Justin Fields in the system. And to be honest, I don't think that's the best spot. Like, I, I don't think him in Matt Nagy's system is the best idea. Now, I think there is a very, very, very good chance that Nagy is either fired during the year or at the end of the year. And if that's the case, and if they, if a certain head coach does end up a the Bears head coach, I think that Justin Fields is a guy that is going to be a phenomenal player, a top 10 quarterback in the league. I think that there is a very good chance that Eric Bieniemy will eventually become the head coach of the Bears. I think it is the perfect spot for him. And this is all assuming that Matt Nagy gets fired. And right now it seems like they're going to rock with Andy Dalton. So I think that is becoming more likely than not, if that's the case. And I don't even dislike Andy Dalton, but they're just not in a spot to be doing that. So I love the outlook of Justin Fields one year later than today. That's kind of my thought on him. For Trey Lance... I think it's going to be a similar thing like with his expectations this year. I'm keeping them low. I'm pe keeping both of these guys' expectations low this year. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to start in San Francisco. I know a lot of 49er fans do not think that, um, but I do. And that's not to knock Trey Lance at all. I think when whenever Trey Lance takes over, which could very well be this year, I mean, I think there's a chance. But I think that there's a chance that it's Jimmy this year. We don't see Trey Lance at all. People kind of go, oh, look. Trey Lance, like he was over, he shouldn't have got drafted that high. And I think they're going to say that the same thing about Justin Fields when Andy Dalton's the starter. And I think both these guys are like the year two breakout players. Like I think they are, especially if you buy cards, if you buy football cards, I think that Justin Fields by far will be the next, the best option next year. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm going to invest a lot of stock into both these guys. So I don't think there's like a clear answer for me. I, I love both of them. I think that right now you're going to, you would have to rock with Trey Lance just in their, in their system. But I do think that if the Bears figure it out, I think Justin Fields has a tremendous chance to be, you know, top end quarterback in this league. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you talked about kind of your pre-draft rankings at the quarterback position. Mine were a bit different. I had Trevor Lawrence, obviously, number one. My number two was Justin Fields. My number three was Trey Lance. Zach Wilson was not in my top three. I really liked these two guys. I really thought that they had a lot of potential. And, you know, I, I really love Justin Fields at Oakland. I'm sorry, I almost said Oklahoma State, at the Ohio State University. He was an absolute beast for them. And that game that he had, you know, in the college football playoff where he was injured and he absolutely dominated uh, Clemson, that was one of the most impressive college football performances I've ever seen out of a quarterback. You know, that team was not supposed to win that game. And he went out there and he was able to dominate while injured. And it was just incredibly impressive. Now, 
the issue I see with Justin Fields is is definitely the situation. I do have concerns with the Chicago Bears. And Matt, you touched on Matt Nagy, which which I would agree with. I do not love him as a head coach. Now, if Eric Bieniemy did end up getting there, I think that would definitely improve the situation. But I am concerned with another part of the team, which is the weapons that he has around him and the ability for Chicago to add weapons around him. Because if you look at what they have, Chicago was a great defense. They ended up drafting an offensive tackle this year. They obviously drafted Justin Fields. They are looking uh, forward to playing with Justin Fields in the future. However, we shall see what happens. Because if you look at the wide receivers, the most important part of the pass catching group, and you know David Montgomery is a, a, a phenomenally underrated running back. I think he's definitely a top 10 running back, phenomenal tackle breaker. Not a terrific receiving back. And they have Jimmy Graham, an older tight end. Um, and then they also have Cole Komet, who they drafted last year, who kind of struggled. However, he does have potential. He's the first tra- tight end drafted last year. But then you look at the wide receivers. And, you know, you may know who the wide receivers are today. But do you know who their wide receivers are next year? Under contract, they have four wide receivers for next year. Riley Ridley. Darnell Mooney, Daz Newsom, and Khalil McLean. That's not good. Mooney's is, only the, the only standout guy. Yeah, Mooney is the only player that you could say, oh, yeah, 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 I'd like to have that. Now, if well, Daz Newsom hasn't Ridley, played yet. Yes, that, that is very true. But you look at this year and you're like, oh, wow, it has a much better receiving core because they have Allen Robinson, a, a tremendously underrated. Bears got a lot of underrated guys. Allen Robinson, very underrated. But he, he didn't sign the extension. He was tagged. And we'll see what happens with him. A lot of people thought he would be traded. They have Anthony Miller. They have Marquise Goodwin. I don't think Marquise Goodwin's anything special. But, you know, they, they just have a ton of players that they're at least going to be able to try out and see if they're going to fit. And that's a concern that I have is that who are wide receivers that they've brought in in the past? The Chicago Bears are one of only a few franchises to never have a 4,000-yard quarterback. And this is not a team that was created in 2002. This is a very old franchise that's never had a 4,000-yard quarterback. Now, it probably will happen 17-game season. Like, that's not a concern for Justin Fields. It's just one of those things where they've never really been great at bringing in wide receivers. Running backs, yeah. Defense, absolutely. But if you're looking at the quarterback position, I, I'm concerned with Justin Fields because he is in the Bears system. And I and I really like Justin Fields. I was I, I hate to say that I was disappointed that he went to the Bears. I think he can still succeed. But if you if you're thinking right now, oh, well, they can draft a wide receiver next year. I wish that was the case, but they traded their first round draft pick next year to get Justin Fields, which I think is, you know, you have to make that trade. However, it takes away the ability to get a first-round wide receiver. Now, they could make another trade if they trade Allen Robinson this year and are able to get certain draft picks. Like, they could still do things. Will they do it? Will it succeed? I don't know. So that's where I'm kind of concerned with Justin Fields and also Matt touched a little bit on Andy Dalton potentially uh, being the starter, which I think is ridiculous. I like Andy Dalton, but, like, Can I add add one thing about the weapons real quick? Yeah, go for it. So I think it's hard to kind of judge their weapon looking into the future just because, like you said, they're in a weird spot with A-Rob. If A-Rob's there and you have Mooney as like your number two, number three guy, like that's but do a you really good think spot. do you really think there's even a chance that Allen Robinson comes back? Like he, he I, do, I think I he's do. shown that he doesn't want to be there well, at all. But the, okay, but that's the thing with the current, like the current group of like the current coach and Ryan or Ryan Pace and then Matt Nagy. That's kind of their regime. And I don't I think that regime is coming to an end. So I think if you bring in the enemy. The first thing he's going to want to do is keep a Rob. That's my thought on it. So, okay. and I, and I like Anthony Miller. I think Anthony Miller's a guy that really hasn't had that, had a great chance to put up numbers. Like he's always been a solid player. Like he's always been viewed as like, Oh, he's a pretty good receiver, but he's never like had crazy numbers. Well, he's like, not on the roster next year. No, no, I know. I'm saying, but if they retain both of those guys, it yeah. looks way better. If, so. if they retain guys, you know, that that's the concerns that I have. There, there's, there's more unknowns with that team, especially with them potentially not even playing uh, Justin Fields very much this year. Looking at Trey Lance, Trey Lance went to the best system a a young quarterback could have gone to this year, better than Jacksonville, who brought in Urban Meyer as their head coach, who I don't hate as a head coach. I think he's, I think he's okay. I think he has potential. He could also completely flop in the NFL and, you know, that could happen. The Jets, probably the worst case scenario other than, you know, the Texans, but of the, the top tier teams in the draft, 
you wanted to go to the 49ers. Trey Lance is a very smart individual. You know this, Matt. He he is incredibly smart. He's going to an incredibly smart and diligent head coach in Kyle Shanahan, and he's got very good weapons that are going to be able to stay there. You look at George Kittle. I think he's the best tight end in the NFL. You look at, you know, whether or not Debo Samuel is there for the long haul, you know, whether or not he's traded, that is. Obviously, he's under contract for a few more years. You know, that 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 could happen. However, they drafted Trey Sermon. Kyle Shanahan's going to get any running back to work in his system. That is why you have Kyle Shanahan. That is the reason for Kyle Shanahan. And then you also have Brandon Ayuk, and he is he looked to be a, a very good and young, promising wide receiver last year out of Arizona State. And I think that that's just something where you can look at and say, oh, wow, that's great. They've got an offense. Let's see if they have a defense. Oh, well, they have Fred Warner, who they, I'm assuming, will sign to an extension. They also have Nick Bosa, pretty darn good football player. And then they also drafted a fair amount of young guys that they're going to be able to sub in. But 49ers have been known for defense, but they've also been known for quarterbacks. That That's just a historical franchise thing. And you know, whether or not you believe in those types of things, like, you know, the Bears not having great quarterbacks in their history. The 49ers have had great quarterbacks. It's similar to the Lions not being able to run the football since Barry Sanders. Like, sometimes those just happen in franchises. What they focus on is different from what other teams focus on. And for me, I really like Trey Lance in this situation. I love both the players. I just don't love the situation in Chicago for me. Like, it's just, it's too difficult. There's too many ifs, too many variables. If everything goes well, if everything goes perfectly for both players, I think Justin Fields has the, the better career. If everything goes perfectly in each of their situations. However, the likelihood of that is way lower for Justin Fields than it is for Trey Lance. So that, that would be my opinion on it. Matt, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I like that you bring up the stuff about Trey Lance having those young weapons. I think Brandon Ayuk is an absolutely phenomenal player. I, th I think he'll be viewed a lot better than he currently is. Um I don't know if you've looked at current any current fantasy projections, but some have Debo Samuel over Brandon Ayuk. I find that absolutely ridiculous. I wouldn't be surprised if Brandon Ayuk has double the catches of Debo Samuel next year. Um, that's just kind of how they, they're going to feed Brandon Ayuk. So I, I think he's a great player. George Kittle, George Kittle does so much in the run in the pass game. Yes, you know, you brought up Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is probably the greatest receiving tight end we'll ever see. Um, at least, I mean, up to this point. And then you, but he doesn't do, he doesn't have the impact that George does in the run game. Um, you didn't really bring up that much on the offensive line. They lock up Trent Williams. Their offense, this is the best offensive line that Kyle Shannon has had. Now the defense is not the same defense of 2019. You lose Buckner. Uh, you don't have Sherm. You know, Sherm was the number one graded corner in 2019. Like you don't have that. Uh, but they add a couple corners. Um, and, and the defense, the defensive line is still pretty good. Uh, you have Javon Kinlaw. You have Eric Armstead. You brought up Nick Bosa. Um, they retain DJ Jones. Like there's a, there's a lot of things to like about that team. Um, front seven, especially, uh, definitely some questions in the secondary, but you still got Jimmy Ward back there. Like you still got most of those guys, like their defense will be really good. Last year was a really good defense. Um, like I said, though, I don't think it's this year. I don't know if Lance is yours this year. I would lean no, but it's like, it's really close. It's probably like 60%. It's, it's Jimmy 40%. It's Lance. That's kind of where I'm at. Um, but Moving forward, it's it's without question like who's in the more secure spot, Trey Lance. It's it's very obvious. Um, but I do think that if if the Bears do like what we brought up, like bringing in a guy like Bienemy, it doesn't always have to be him. You know, there's other good head coaches out yeah. there. But if they bring in a guy that can really be that head coach to mentor Justin Fields, and you know, to like you said, Chicago has had a a bad past. Well, a lot of that is regimes, and even when regimes change. Like the owner's influence is always going to be there. He's picking the general manager most of the time. So, like that does have a little bit of a play. Um, I don't know how much it really does. Like, because you brought up 49ers quarterbacks, and it's been 20 years since they've they've really had a dude. Uh, so like that's kind of the issue there. But I do think that moving forward, I mean, Kyle Shanahan is one of the best in the business. I think if you're looking at offensive coaches, Sean Payton, Andy Reid, and him are the the top three. Um, and and there's a lot of great offensive coaches. But if you're a quarterback, like you said. There's no other place you want to be. And also, we have no idea how Kyle Shanahan is going to use Trey Lance, which maybe some people could take that as a fault. That is terrifying for opposing defenses. Like, yeah. If you just just watch a Trey Lance highlight film and be like, oh, imagine this dude in Kyle Shanahan's office. And keep in mind he's playing in a much lower conference, but it it's going to be something special, I think. And I think that Justin Fields, 
I hope that we get to see Justin Fields to A-Rob this year because that's going to be something special too. But that's kind of where I'm at on, the, on all this. Yeah, the, it's very unique how they're in relatively similar situations for this year, but the outlook is so different for the future because they're both behind veteran quarterbacks that are probably on their last chance to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. Jimmy Garoppolo in San Francisco, is he really worth that kind of money? Or are the Patriots, or I'm sorry, not the Patriots, are the 49ers just going to try and chip him off? And Andy Dalton, could he earn himself a backup role in another place? Like, really, I don't think anybody's going to be looking at Andy Dalton to become a starter after this year, but it's looking at him like, hey, he could maybe mentor a young quarterback similar to the way he mentored Justin Fields. However, the future is just so different for these guys. Justin Fields is the unknown with the with the ridiculously high ceiling. And then Trey Lance has Kyle Shanahan and the high floor. He also has a high ceiling, don't get me wrong. But I think Justin Fields is a little bit higher. But it's going to be a lot of fun to watch these guys. If you are a fan of the 49ers or if you're a fan of the Bears, let us know your thoughts and opinions on not just your quarterback but the other quarterback and, and what you think. Because honestly, there is a – there was a decent possibility going into the draft that people wouldn't be surprised if you said, oh, the 49ers selected Justin Fields at number three and the Chicago Bears traded up to number 11 and selected Trey Lance. Like th that was a very good possibility that that could have happened. The opposite happened. But like I th I'm assuming that most of the fans of these teams had an opinion on the other quarterback. So let us know what you think. One, one more thing real quick. Yeah, I'll just add. We're also not really evaluating these players that much too. So if you wanted us to do some more like player evaluations of these yeah. guys, love to do that as well. But this is more like situation than it is player because I mean I told you I like both the guys a lot. But yeah, and I feel like when we're kind of like oh, I don't know how good he's gonna be on the Bears, like we still really like Justin Fields. So absolutely, make sure to subscribe to the Football Diary if you want to hear the the stories every single weekday of current NFL, and if you want to hear the stories of the historical NFL and, and hear all about these legendary players and their biographies and things like that, make sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, comment any sort of player versus player, any sort of videos that you want us to do. We will absolutely look at those different uh, comments. A lot of people have suggested things on our TikTok, and we've gotten a suggestion in one of our videos. So thank you all so much. And we'll see all of you again tomorrow with another current NFL topic.